So today we are going to learn how to create this basket. There are so many different things that we're going to learn in this lesson. Look at our timeline. We're going to touch on sketches, revolve, offset planes. We're going to do more extrudes and then circular pattern to come up with this amazing design. This was uh, something that a user was asking about how to design. He was stumped. So we're going to talk about an easy way. Stick with this tutorial. You'll learn all sorts of little tricks along the way, especially with sketching, and uh, hope that you really benefit from this tutorial. So let's dig into it. So the first thing that we're going to do is, and I can't stress this enough if you watch uh, my other tutorials, we need to create a new component. So although we're just going to have one component or one body in this entire uh, project, uh, we still want to just name it. So let's just name it basket. Okay, so let's create a sketch. Now we're going to create a sketch on the YZ plane. Now what is the height of our basket? Let's just create a construction line and we're going to call this 10 inches. To create a construction line, we can just single click it and either click on the line type here or press X on the keyboard and you see it becomes dotted. This is going to be the axis of rotation. Now, next thing we're going to do is create our pattern. So again, if we're looking at the uh, cutout section of our basket, we're going to look at the extent, just the wall of our basket. So uh, let's do that. Let's, um, let's create something like this. I'm just going to exaggerate it right now. Great. And this shape right here, is going to be patterned all the way down to the bottom. So let's just throw some dimensions on this here. Let's create a, by pressing D on the keyboard, we are going to call this 50 thou. Now let's call it 100 thou. There we go. Now we are going to have even steps going all the way down. So I'm just gonna make this easy and I'll call it half an inch. Great. And we're going to say that this line is going to be equal to that line. So instead of doing another dimension, we're just going to go up to our constraints and say equal. So we want this line to be equal to that. Perfect. Now we want to say that this top here is going to be even with our 10 inches. Well, how can we do that? We're going to go to our constraints and say horizontal vertical constraint. We're going to pick our endpoint and our endpoint here, and look at what happens. This line is going to be perfectly horizontal to this endpoint. There we go, and it becomes black. So we also need to create our diameter. So how far is this away from our center point? Well, let's do it. Let's press D, click our center point, and then we can pick whatever we want. Let's just pick the, well, let's pick the outside. And then what we're going to do is we are going to right click and press diameter dimension. Let's select that and see what happens. Ah, uh, excellent. So now we've got a diameter. So we can just measure the diameter of our basket and pick whatever we want. So what do we want here? I don't know. Let's go 14 inches. Now, perfect. Everything is black except for this line. So what's the problem? This dimension needs to be constrained. So oftentimes, whenever you see a blue line, remember black lines are exactly what you want. That means they're fully constrained, they're locked into place. So how you can find that is just left click, left click on the blue line and try and move it in whatever direction you can, and it will show the constraint that needs to be constrained or the, the object that needs to be constrained. So how do we make this equal to 50 thou or 100 thou? Let's Press the equal constraint, click on that line, and click on that line. There we go, everything is fully constrained. So now let's pattern this. We're gonna to go to Create Rectangular Pattern, click all of our objects, so our four lines, and which direction do we wanna pattern it? In our arrow direction here, in Z. So we're gonna go down. Now let's not worry too much about space in them perfectly because we're going to do that over here. So instead of going extent, let's go spacing. Extent right now is from the top to here. 
and we can make an extent or we can space it. Well, let's do that. The distance of the spacing is going to be, well, we have half an inch plus half an inch equals one inch. There we go. So now they're going to be all locked together. And how many do we want? We'll just hit the quantity bar here. Well, look at that. So we've got this nice pattern going all the way flush with our bottom. Again, we've done the math here. It's 10 inches tall. Each of these levels is, or these steps is going to be half an inch. So it equals a perfect spacing. And let's hit OK. Let's finish the sketch. We are going to, well, let's connect that to there. And let's create a 50 thou offset that finishes off our basket shape, or I'm sorry, a hundred thou offset. So let's move that over there. Again, we can just exaggerate it, just exaggerate it for now. That's fine. So remember, this is another line. So let's equal this line to this line. Perfect. And then we can do a, a dimension from here to here and call it whatever we want. Well, let's just call it 100 thou to make it even. There we go. So the outline of our basket shape, including these steps, is complete. Let's go finish. So now what do we want to do? We want to revolve this around our center axis, our Z axis in this case. So let's do that. Let's go to revolve and we can pick our profile. Actually, our profile is not closed. Why? Because this line needs to be closed. So let's do that first. We can actually go back to our sketch. This doesn't need to be a construction line, actually. Uh, so let's turn that off and it will close our whole profile right here. OK, so sometimes we want a construction line. Sometimes we don't. We could have just closed this off anyways. Doesn't really matter. Now we can pick our profile. And you see how our profile selected. We can select another profile if we want. There we go. And select our axis. And now look what happens. Okay, so we've got this basket looking shape right here. That's great. Now we have to put in our, uh, our vents or you might say our basket pattern. So how do we do that? Well, let's do an offset plane and let's pick our XZ plane and just bring it out. Doesn't matter as long as it's past the edge of our or the diameter of our basket here. So I've gone to nine inches. We can make this plane bigger now. Great. So now let's do a sketch on this plane. Perfect. What we see here is we've got our center point and we can project any of these rings, any, any of this part of our basket onto the sketch plane that we're working on. So let's again create as our center point. Now let's create, let's project first of all the top line here. So if we do this on an angle, it will show it a little bit more. Remember we are working on a sketch plane that's offset from our XZ plane. But look at this, if I press P, it brings up a window project. Well, what do I want to project? Let's project this top geometry. And look what happens as soon as I hover over it, it will project a red line onto our current sketch plane. So let's do that. Let's pick this top surface. We don't have to actually pick edges. We can pick faces as well. In this case, it's the exact same thing. So let's pick that edge. Now we've got the top edge to work with. Let's go back to our front face. Now what we're going to do is create little squares that go all the way down to the bottom. So let's do that. We can go two point rectangle, center rectangle, pick this here and put in our dimensions. We're just going to go 0.5 by 0.5 and then we can dimension it off of the top or we could actually even project this line in and make it collinear but let's do a dimension 
Great. Let's type in 0.5. And now we're going to pattern it. Rectangular pattern, one, two, three, four. We're going to do the exact same thing. So let's go down. Again, we can adjust it now. Distribution is under spacing. We can go to one inch spacing. And how many do we want? Well, let's go all the way down to the bottom here. Now we don't want to go to the very bottom. That's going to interrupt the bottom of our basket, which is too far. So let's go to nine. Let's go OK and finish our sketch. So this is what we end up with. We have a sketch with the holes that are going to cut through our basket. So let's do that. Let's extrude them. And we can pick each of those profiles. And let's just bring it in. And you can see as soon as we enter the basket, it will go to operation cut mode. Let's just go OK. It hides our sketch automatically. So now we want to take this pattern and we want to revolve it around our part. Well, how do we do that? The exact same way that we revolved our sketch profile, but we're going to go to pattern, circular pattern. Remember, we have to think of a circular pattern as revolving around an axis. In this case, we have the Z axis in the middle of our part. Say, for example, we don't know where our axis is, or we have a part that's built off of the Z axis. This is simple. We can just go to construct and we can go to axis through cylinder. Pick our cylinder and we have an axis right through the center. But I'm going to go cancel because we already have on our origin our Z axis there. So let's go back to create pattern, circular pattern. Now remember, for our object type, we don't want to select bodies. We want to select features. Features. We've created an extrude feature down here. That's what cut these nine squares. So we want to pattern that feature. Let's zoom in and we can grab that face. Don't worry, it selects completely around, around about the basket, but that's okay. What is our axis? Well, we're going to pick our Z axis and then look what we have here. So this is a little bit processor intense, but that's okay. We only do it once. So our quantity is going to take a while for us to keep selecting until we get enough squares. Uh, let's just type in 20. Mm, not quite enough. Let's type in 30. Let's get in there. Let's type in 40. Perfect. Uh, let's keep on going here. We want the full distribution. Let's go. Let's go 50. So right now it actually says there's too many pattern instances. Consider uh, redistribution. So let's just go down 40. Great. Let's press OK. This will take a little bit of time. And there we have it. Our basket is complete. So if we wanted to do a little lip off the top, we could do that as well. Let's just go back into our original sketch and we can put a little, little lip on there. Let's go up. Perfect. Let's dimension this. And if we want this to be 100,000, we can just click on another dimension that's 100,000 and look what we have. Perfect. And then this dimension as well, let's call it three quarters of an inch. Oh, we can't do that. So let's look at our, ah, our line is not vertical. So how do we do that? We go here to horizontal vertical, click that. Perfect. Finish sketch. We're going to go back to our revolve uh, feature in our timeline. We just have to let everything update. A little secret here, we can bring back our timeline so we don't keep on processing a, uh, a heavy processing feature. And now we can go back to our revolve, select one more profile. There we go. Oh, we've got a lip on the top there. Now, this is interesting. Our warning says, uh oh, we've lost our 
our profile. Where is it? So we can right click manage loss projections. So what is it saying? It's saying, oh, we've lost the projection. That's because we added the lip. Well, let's just go back here and relink. There we go. And select that edge. Perfect. Finish sketch. Now we can go back to our timeline. Let it process again. And there is our finished basket. So with Fusion 360, you can create complicated designs in a very quick and efficient way. Hope that you've really benefited from this lesson. If you have, we would appreciate a like. Please subscribe as well. We have lots of tutorial videos coming out where we teach uh, sketching, where we teach constraints, where we teach modeling so that you can get any idea in your head onto the palette in Fusion 360. So thanks again for joining. Hope to see you next time on the Learn It channel.